Hello, hello, hello. Uh, Franz Cantor here again, uh, cartoonist, illustrator, teacher, tune talker, blabber mouth, you name it. Um, hope you're having a great day. I'm having a fine day today. It's a little bit rainy down here in Melbourne, but uh, we're going to try and uh, persist. One second. Uh, if we just uh, give me one sec to make sure my reference has got a power cable attached. There you go. It should be fine. Um, okay, let's try and get, make sure this is happening. All right, here we go. So today uh, I thought we'd do something special. I did Shemp Howard um, a few days ago, and uh, I really enjoyed that because I'm a big fan of the Three Stooges. So I thought today I might draw, um, if I can get the iPad over here, Sorry, um, here we go. Uh, Larry Fine. Larry Fine was, of course, the second stooge. He's kind of like the straight man in the, uh, in the group. So he's the one that, that really is... What's the, what's the role of a straight man? To sort of uh, be the, you know, the audience, kind of be the audience. So we're seeing the, the humour through his eyes. And he kind of uh, laughs at... All of the jokes and the humor, finds the humor in uh, everything. Not quite as stupid as uh, um, Curly or um, Shemp, you know, but uh, still a very appreciative of a joke. But he's a place like probably the pivotal part, the main part of, of the comedy of the Stooges. Um, and he's, he's called, referred to as uh, Porcupine by Mo. So he's like, you know, he's the second guy to get poked in the eye or, or punched or something like that in the belly. Uh, this is him, uh, 1930. <laughs> Larry's first words on film, Me Too. <laughs> it looks, he's great. You can see he's got this uh, very expressive face. So we're going to have a, a good time with that. Um, what else? This is them together with uh, Shemp, of course. And um, you can see he's got this uh, typical, you know, they're just sort of like really, their expressions really work well together as a, as a group. It's, it's just uh, amazing stuff. And this is him, of course, with Curly. And um, he's a great character, Larry. And of course, he's the voice of, um, he's the voice of uh, uh, Stimpy from the Ren and Stimpy show. But... Obviously, you know, voiced by uh, Billy West. So he did a beautiful Larry Fine impression for the character of Stimpy. Stimpy the cat. So uh, this is what we're going to draw. We're going to draw uh, this character here. Now he's got this very elastic face, a lot of muscles pushing and pulling here. Very beautiful uh, physical comedian and a visual comedian so he can use the muscles of his face to create this incredible um you know uh, uh elastic uh, uh humorous uh, expressions all right so let's uh let's try to explain the process here a little bit i've done a little thumbnail sketch that doesn't look like much does it it's kind of like a, a pear upside down all right way up if you want to think of a pear so um so big head at the top and, you know, squeezing all of the energy, all the muscles down past the nose. The nose is like a big shape uh, in the center of the uh, image. And then obviously the, um, the features are going to be, you know, squeezed down into the neck and then into the collar of the shirt. So that's the methodology, that's the, 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 the uh, thoughts behind what we're going to do. Uh, lighting wise it's kind of like a, a top-down light so there's shadows kind of sh it's probably this direction so the shadows are going to be coming down from above pretty much and there's a little bit of side lighting at the, the left and right to sort of give it a bit more um, a bit more uh, three-dimensional properties uh, when I say three dimensions, of course, I, I'm actually talking about shading. So if you think about 
the idea of shading, creating a three-dimensional version of a shape. So if this is a shape, I am adding shadow to establish that the light source is coming down from that direction and the shadow is being um, lit by a light source, a bounce light from the other direction. So that kind of gives you an umbra and penumbra concept. The way the moon looks sometimes, yeah, or planets. All right, uh, the other thing to note is we're going to be concentrating, I'll use a different color pencil, we're gonna be concentrating in the so-called mask area, which includes the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. And this is a sort of, forms a sort of a T, T zone, a T shaped uh, area, right? So we're going to be ex exploding the proportions, exa exaggerating proportions, and using a little bit of stylization and simplification, and then going back into those simple shapes like this and explore some details, okay? But our main area of focus is gonna be within this T zone, this eyes, nose, and mouth. So all of the distorted shapes, exaggerated proportions are uh, done so with uh, all of the other features in mind. Okay, we'll explain more as we go what the thought process is. So I've taken this pencil sketch, the thumbnail, which I usually do to work something out quickly in a small scale, and I've done a, a version of it a bit bigger. So I've made a few changes as I, as I went. I kind of like this twist happening through the picture plane, so we're going to try and... Uh, keep that all right so again my pencils have gone blunt so I'll just uh, have a quick little um, sharpen up here I don't like uh, electric sharpeners <laughs> very noisy okay here we go um, we're gonna keep the uh, picture in front of us or close by because the closer the reference is the more we can uh, build up and not lose uh, details, because the further away it is, the more your brain has to remember. And my brain doesn't remember anything. So I've got, literally got to find it on the paper, otherwise it's not gonna happen. So I have to explore <laughs> the possibilities uh, on the paper itself. Okay, so looking at shapes, I'm uh, looking at the, the shape of things, the nose and the eyes and the mouth, and I'm exaggerating as I go, which means that I'm looking at the contours, the directions of the lines, right? And then deciding um, how to exaggerate that. So if there's a little bump, I'm making the bump a little bit bigger. <clears throat> and you do so within the context of the other elements, the other features of the face. Uh, also keep in mind perspective and uh, the linear properties of drawing. So you need to line, align things up. Okay, the brain tends to, if the head's at a tilt like this, the eyes are at a tilt, the brain tends to over time straighten it up artificially. So be careful about that. If it goes too far, uh, of course you, you're going to create a, an error, an undesirable effect. Um, some people think, think that there aren't errors. They're just uh, areas to pivot direction, change direction. Okay, so again, you know, you can see how I'm holding the pencil. This is like a, like a, a violin bow, perhaps, you know, like this, to, get a, to use the side of the pencil um, in a broader, lighter stroke, rather than you know, the pencil will hold like this, the death grip. Uh, so it was, you know, just really keep that in mind because it gives you a, a lighter stroke. Um, okay, so don't do a lot of, keep the, the, the lines quite clean if you can. I know I've put lines across here, but I'll, I'll try and um, erase some of them as I go. Um, So eyebrows are nice, aren't they? Especially when they have that ability to add 
uh, so much power to an expression. You know, the eyebrows up is one thing that that birds don't have, do they? They haven't got eyebrows. That's a Jim Owen joke. Australian uh, Irish comedian. Why don't birds have eyebrows? So um, uh, we communicate with all of these muscles uh, in our in our face, and we communicate meaning. And with comedy, the meaning is um, obviously intended to to have a a humorous uh, effect. Um, there is a like a, some thoughts you can try to ellipse the uh, the eyes themselves, the shape of the eyes. If you feel like it, it's really up to you how much you change um, anatomy. You know, even things that are not supposed to be ellipses. Um, if you if it feels right and feels appropriate to get some sort of uh, distortion in the eyeball in the eye shape um, itself, then uh, don't hop back. Experiment with it. It's all experimentation. You know, this is a live drawing, so I'm really you know, it could go wrong. It could go horribly wrong. But uh, we'll, we'll hopefully it won't, you know. But whatever, it ha whatever happens, um, we're all in it together. Um, whatever happens, the, uh, the process itself is, is, in its, is the, the goal here, not the end result for this particular thing. You know, I mean, if you... The thing with caricatures for, like if you're working a, for a job or something, if you don't get it first the right time, if you don't get it right the first time, um, try again. Obvious, right? So sometimes faces, likenesses confuse you. You can get uh, confused by a lot, what's important, what's relevant in the expressions, in the features that are recognizable. You know, <clears throat> so something to keep in mind. Don't be so hard on yourself. Take it easy, guy. It's a damn insane. Um, Relax, guy. Saddam Hussein from um, South Park. Um. So, yeah, just, uh, you know, take it one step at a time and explore the possibilities that these features are giving you, you know. Uh, look at the light and shade. Look at, think about the anatomy. What's the underlying structure? Where's the, the eye socket, the cheekbones? Things that poke out through the flesh, right? Because remember, flesh is, is flexible, but there's not a lot of mass over the skull with um, with the face you know there's main muscles like around the the mouth and the nose that give us expressions to communicate with really quite a, a marvel of um, possibilities and flexibility the human face the human body itself is a marvel you know, what it can do. But the face is, the faces and hands, which most people find difficult to draw, are, they're difficult because we're very a keen, we're very keenly aware of how they are used in very subtle ways to communicate. It's a lot of uh, wayward hairs, a lot of freedom you can have with uh, this hair. Of course, pencil, how good is pencil, you know, in expressing hair? It's great, it's, it's made for it, those lines, they're so beautiful and expressive. So I'm gonna enjoy this. It's a lot of great uh, opportunity for um, exploring these shapes. So what are these expressions, these, these, these lines? Tell me about Larry. Um, I mean, obviously they're exaggerated for, you know, comedic purposes. But 
<coughs> lines, wrinkles form because of excessive use. It's like erosion. You know, the Grand Canyon is formed because of the erosion of water over millions of years. It's the same thing with, um, with wrinkles of the face. It's created by use and um, expressive use. So, you know, Larry is a very, very expressive um, actor. And um, it tells you a lot about the guy, actually. It tells you a lot about the person that he's, um, spends a lot of time laughing, spends a lot of time um, throwing his face into this sort of acrobatics, this, uh, this uh, facial acrobatics that he does. And he does it so well. There, other than Shemp, there is probably, he's the best one at this sort of uh, expressive facial contortions. Um, Shemp, of course, is like, you know, very, very uh, flexible, his face. More than Curly or Mo. Uh, try and line up. Make sure that the lines, remember we're going at an angle here. So keep everything consistently uh, at that, the, those um, anchor points that are now twisted down that way, okay? Now you're gonna get a little bit of drifting here and there. You can't help that really. If you were in Photoshop, you could flip both and uh, left, left and right, so mirror version it so that you can get a, a, an idea of uh, if anything's moving that you don't want it to. Um, you can find it quite quickly that way, but we don't have Photoshop. Uh, we're doing this with a pencil and, um, you know, that's what's going to happen. So it's something that be aware of. The, the more you're aware of this, the less chance it'll, it'll drift. The features won't drift away from you. Some very fine hairs as well. So I'm kind of, there's so many hairs, I'm not being, ex I'm trying not to be too exact with these. Uh, putting a little reflection in the head uh, over here, which look like Dutch windows on a curved surface. So the idea is like this. You do that, right? And they kind of look like a window. And <laughs> it's a funny cartoon symbol that means shiny and um, if you were to put some shade right next to it like a cue ball right and even though the the light could be coming from there it's basically favoring a darker penumbra the dark darker umbra and penumbra over here the um, cue ball itself is a darkish tone it could be the red ball or the blue ball or whatever, or the black ball. And that makes it look glossy. So that's the principle. So we're going to try to use that in the, um, in the process. Now he's got a very, very um, frizzy hair, which is intentional for the character. It can present an interesting problem for drawing because there's a lot of drawing there's a lot of lines you, you have to contend with you know so try to keep the direction of the hair going but you know don't let it slow you down too much so keep some Keep it under control somehow. Relax. Don't let it get you down. Having a bad hair day? Try this quick solution. Use a pencil. Why not? Comb it. So it's kind of like combing. Here I am combing. I'm making this frizzy, making it into a a nest of virus, a nest of uh, tangled hairs, which give it, uh, and giving it some definition, 
and a lot of personality. It's good, I like this. It's nice. Good. All right. Oh, we've blunted the hair. Uh, the uh, hair. We've blunted the pencil a little bit. That's all right. We'll just uh, wear with that a little bit. See what happens to it. Come down back here. So follow the hair direction um, and just work rapidly. Don't think too much about it because it's not going to help to be very exact. It's not, you know, as long as you have the bulk of the hair in the right sort of configuration, you don't have to be precise at this stage. We don't have the time to do that for this illustration. If you are doing something more realistic you'd probably tend to slow down and you know draw a little bit care more careful but at this stage i think we're just uh, fine with this approach you can see it now it looks hairy it looks like hair when we put the black pencil in we'll see if we can tease that even more uh i don't want to i don't want to he has red hair so i don't want to sort of give it uh black um, too much. Maybe just in some shadow, just to create a bit of volume here and there. Okay, here we go. We're getting to the mouth now. We're going down past the nose. Give the nose a bit of definition, perhaps. Put another French window here. French window is, of course, just a symbol for shine. As I said before, there isn't a French window in sight. Okay, so lovely to see these crossed uh, wrinkles in here because it's, you know, the face is a very flexible tool, uh, an expressive element. And um, someone like uh, Larry puts that to the test right so obviously there's a lot of um, it gets a lot of work don't just uh, when you put out in shapes just keep your eye on the direction of these hairs like you did for the hair you know just keep make sure that you, you don't go out of the wrong direction with a lot of the uh, a lot of the lines I uh, uh, like to favor a, a sort of a, sometimes a shaded approach, but mostly, you know, like a hatch and cross hatch sort of effect with the pencil lines. Okay, so that gives you a little bit of, uh, you know, you don't sort of blend too much yet. Create a little bit of uh, texture because the face, oh, there's a nice, uh, there's a lot of little, um, the wrinkles are picking up a lot of side lights here and there in the photograph. So maybe I want to try to keep some of that. Um, be an idea, wouldn't it? If you could do that. Let's try and do that. That's nice. That's good. Now, because the, the mouth is being pushed up at an angle, at a sort of a quizzical, comical angle, uh, let me get that shine, that muscle going up here. So we're going to build up on that in a sec. I just want to place the mouth in a, a state that makes sense. So I'm going to have the nose overhang the lips themselves. So the nose is a feature here. It is definitely a feature, you know. That's good. That'll do. Now I have to draw underneath the nose, right underneath the nose. 
and come out the other end with a line in a direction that makes sense. And I think that might work. So a little bit of the top lip, just a little bit showing there before it disappears under the nose. Just that little tiny slice of top lip. Oh, it's so cute. And uh, then we go into the, me obviously got a shadow that goes over there, but don't overdo the shadow. And then you've got the muscle that pulls the lips from below. So the bottom lip would be kind of thinner than the top lip, like so. Have to, um, we have to be careful when we put the black in so we, we're not changing what we've drawn. It's a nice little highlight or the side light on the, the chin area. I wonder if he's got a cleft in the chin. I don't think he has. Well, he has no, no, he doesn't have a cleft. He's got sort of a bulb there. So I think that's what's there. That's probably what I see. So we'll leave that. Again, you know, try to keep within the rhythm, creating this rhythm of uh, shapes within the face itself, you know? So it's good. Things tend to sort of flow next to each other, they continue, lines continue as a gesture, sort of like in life drawing. You know, it's a rhythm and gesture, so curves and straights and overlapping forms and forms that tuck under and create a sense of unity. He's got like a, 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 a goiter, no, he's got like a bulge here on the side of his head because it, to compensate for this, this twisting and pulling of the muscles over onto the, the, the tipping the, the smile towards the top, pushing up that way, there's a, there's a counterbalance down there. So there's a kind of a putty, you know, like pulling dough or something, that sort of effect around the face, which is so exciting to see that. Oh, it was amazing, you know, this guy. Um, those facial expressions are killer. Yeah, just so funny. I found him genius, ingenious uh, when I was a kid. I just adored the, the Stooges so much. Um, and in particular, I, lo I love them all. Let's, I don't want to play favorites and say I love them one more than the other. You know, I did enjoy Curly and I did enjoy Shemp. Um, you know, they're obviously... Uh, different styles and that's what I liked about it. They they had a unique um, a uniqueness about their their comedy. Both very, very different, very different styles. That'll do. Come down here, come down there, and let's try to make this. Uh, this time will be a little bit parallel to the um, to the bottom of the page, so make a nice squared frame. That'll do. That's good enough. Good enough. I've actually had a quote here in a word balloon, um, which I'll write down here. The pain goes away on payday. It might be a reference to the physical pain that he, that he expressed or, you know, um, working in physical comedy. Because um, you know, it's a very demanding, um, it's a very demanding job, isn't it? All right, so we're going to get some, uh, 
some black pencil now and we're going to get hit it with some white pencil in a minute too might actually help it out a little bit in the beginning with a highlight where we want it in the um, eyes so let's let's make sure that we leave that alone do that this bit of shine here and there there and here These little, um, they're like little symbols, windows, indicate uh, a comedy, uh, uh, like a reference to comics. The French windows. Cool. Okay, that'll do for now. And we'll just build up. Let's actually hit the black pencil first to establish uh, the contrast, you know, the lightest parts and the darkest parts of the drawing. And that gives it a sense of um, Of drama. Contrast is very important for drama and for comedy. So when you draw um, eyelashes, be careful. Um, think of the eyelid first. You know the eyelids. Have a good look at the eyelids and how they fold over the eyeball. Remember the eyeball is uh, is there's not a you're not drawing a symbol of an eye. Let's try to do that better. You're not drawing a symbol of an eye like that. Okay, that's a symbol. What you're trying to do is something that is more reflective of the eyeball itself being a sphere um, surrounded by these muscles. So these muscles bulge out and they create overlapping forms. If you were to look at the eye from the side, of course, there would be, you know, these eyelids that, that bulge out. Okay, so that's what we that's what we're looking for. That's what we're trying to um, keep in mind. Keep that in mind when you're drawing. Irrespective, actually, of what you what the photograph tells you, what the the photograph, the um, reference is telling you something. Temper it, always check it, double check it, fact check it. Is this true? Is this true? Is this true? You know, fact check it with what you, what you know from life, from other situations. So sometimes cameras tend to give you a bum steer with regards to their, um, the stuff that, that they're showing you, you know, there's a lot of things hidden or not not uh, featured, but they have to be there nonetheless. And a drawing is, you know, trying to make sense of these facts, these um, lines that you're seeing, you're trying to make sense of them, trying to create a narrative, a, a new form of um, Dialogue with these lines. It's nice, you know, the dialogue of lines. It's a pencil story. Is a dialogue of lines. 
So that's what this is, it's a pencil story and, um, you know, it's a lovely story, actually. This is a, um, a very gentleman, very gentle man, uh, great human being, funny as hell. You know, a great inspira inspiration. I always think about him, I often think about him um, all the time. Always remember Larry. You know, it's um, one of my great uh, pleasures in life. Is and you know, all of us we can all enjoy it now. It's like you know, it's on uh, YouTube. A lot of the gags, a lot of little stories you can you can watch and appreciate them for hours. And think about the love that went into the creation of these gags. You know. A lot of people don't realize that. It's like if Curly physically suffered from the physical comedy. You know, he had brain um, injuries, head injuries constantly. And, um, you know, people don't remember that. They don't think about that. They just think, you know, oh, well, they must be so good. But remember, they do it so many times, so many takes to get the timing right. Because they're very precise, very finicky in their humour. You have to be perfect. No one can do this anymore. No, there's no such... There's no physical comedy like this anymore. Oh, wait, Chines. Um, I'll be all over it. So, here we go, we're getting into the hair now, we're getting closer, a little bit closer. I'm going to try to establish some shadows on this side. Uh, oh, let's finish the eye first. Uh, first things first. You know, I'm not putting, I mean, there are obviously lashes on the lower lip, but they're not very dark in the reference, so I'm not sort of playing up with that. Again, I'm, I'm trying to sort of keep that under control. You know, my um, symbols for eyes. The brain wants to make everything simple, shortcut symbols of things. And i um, trying to get away from that. Some beautiful pulling and pushing in opposition, you know. I love these crisscross of, of lines here. Opposing forces. It's really um, facial acrobatics at its best. Really is an amazing man. Um, really incredible work. While I'm doing this, I'm thinking of favorite Larry moments, you know? usually uh, where he's, he laughs at someone getting hurt, you know, probably Mo getting hurt. <laughs> of course that sets Mo off because he gets angry. And then he'll, uh, you know, what's the matter with you? What are you laughing at, porcupine? <laughs> rainy day outside and I'm loving this. This is a great uh, pleasure to to draw Larry, Larry Fine from the Three Stooges. So being the uh, middle banana, you know, the third banana, whatever it is, the middle, middle man in these physical jokes of uh, the Three Stooges, it's always there. I mean, you know, he, he outlived um, Shemp and, and Curly. And he wasn't a Howard, so he wasn't their 
blood kin, but you know, he was um, a force to be reckoned with for sure. Um, I can remember. I remember. I think he did it a few times. One, there's one version with uh, Curly, and I think there might be one version with Shemp as well. I'm not sure, but there's some of the the gags. That, you know, the premises that they did. They they did twice. You know, uh, later on, a different version. It was one Pop Goes the Weasel or something, if you remember that, where Larry, who was an accomplished um, violinist, I presume, because um, I've seen him hold a violin in other photos. And he was playing Pop Goes the Weasel and that just set Curly off. And, uh, you know, into a spin, whoop, 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 whoop. And then uh, it would um, create, uh, he would just, you know, knock out the, the uh, heavyweight champ. Um, so, you know, it was, that was probably, that's probably his, his famous, his most famous scene. Because, you know, usually he's just backing up the others. But that one, he um, he took like a, a a big spot in the story, in the narrative. So a little bit of shadow. Here and there, I don't want to make a meal of this. You can see already the brown pencil underneath is creating a warmth in tone, which warms the uh, black pencil so that it's not as, um, as cool a uh, color against the gray paper. So it warms it, gives it a sort of a, a reddish glow underneath, which is good. I'm going to go over these lines with a pen, a uh, brush pen, a brush in a sec. Um, just some of the lines, not all of them. I just want to help some of these shapes, exaggerate some of these forms that I'm finding here. Really, really enjoying it. I think I put the buttons on the wrong side, but it doesn't matter. I'll ignore it. I can never remember the girl side or the boy side of shirts when I'm drawing. I don't think it really matters that much. Okay, this is good. We've got some nice, see that little bulge there that reflects that uh, twisting that I was telling you about. So we're going to play with that. It's a good uh, thing to look at. Mm. Be careful about outlining things. Just, you know, keep it under control. Now, here we go with the lips. So we found that, uh, I'm going to go a bit slower. Slow down, slow down, slow down. So we're going to create the upper lip just before it hits the nose. Then we're gonna to try to create the, lip, the bottom lip just before it's the nose. Same again, rinse and repeat. On the other side of the face, see? Great. So we've got a good uh, line that follows underneath the nose shape, continues on. That's what we want. That's good. Well, that's a good business there. That's Borat. Let's draw Borat. That'd be a great subject. Let me know if you wanna. Huh, that would be. Let's draw Borat. Oh my god, we've gotta draw Borat now. We must do that. We'll try and do that next. That would be good, wouldn't it? Borat. He's got some great um, shapes in his face that uh, creates this uh, beautiful character. All right, 
So there we go. We're getting a little bit of twisting and pulling in the right sort of proportions, I think. It's nice, feels good, feels good. We'll play with that a little bit more. Again, you know, appropriate use of lines. Don't overdo lines because uh, lines take on a flattening quality. We don't want to do that. I might just uh, I might just rely on the pen brush. Actually, before I do that, I'll do this. So even though it's color pencil, you tend to drag pigment if you're not too careful. So I don't want to do that. I have a good feeling about this. I have a good feeling. I think apart from the, the likeness, I think I've been able to explore a little bit of distortion in here, which is helping me uh, with the form a little bit. So let's, let's play it up a little bit more. We'll go, ooh, that's not very good. We'll play it up a little bit more and um, see what we can uh, achieve. What we're going to try and do is create a sense of modeling, three-dimensional modeling. Sometimes the uh, pencil sharpeners don't want to accommodate. Let's see what that does. You know what? I might try to see if I can erase some of that. That might help. Erase the brown, the white pencil and then the brown pencil underneath it. Give us back the, the paper. Yeah, it's a bit better. So the rest of it, you know, just uh, remember that grey paper is the mid-tone. Okay, so you're building up um, shade. You're not colouring in now with a white pencil. You're not colouring in. You're just helping out the modelling. Okay, by creating a little bit of three-dimensional tone. Like a sculpture. Like a sculptor. I was a sculptor, but then again, no. Oh man, sells potions in a traveling show. Um, so this is a, a great opportunity to add, add, not to subtract, to add, always add relevance and add detail that, that you find exciting, you know, texturally and um, dramatically in the, uh, in the face. Very expressive eyes. He's got eyes like, you know, um, Rodney Dangerfield. Oh, there'll be another subject for that. That'll be fantastic. Rodney Dangerfield, uh, Marty Feldman, you know. These people have eyes that they use as part of their comedy routine. Yeah, and they fine tune it like a, like a, a, a beautiful musical instrument. And that's what we need. We need to see that level of, of liquid um, comedy, that sort of fluid uh, approach to comedy, you know. I think it'd be exciting to, to draw, very, very exciting. Again, this uh, brown is, yeah, it's fine, it's fairly forgiving to remove it. Go back to the paper a little bit and sort of get back. Yay! You'll be able to repair it a little bit there. It'll be good. Again, not all over the place. Just keep it within limits, city limits. No speeds, speeding. You know, look at uh, the pencil, even though it's white. So it's, think of the pencil also as a like a an opportunity to do these cross hatch lines, these hatch lines, they look very, they look and feel correct. 
they look and feel like skin texture. They, they just feel right. And they're, they have an easier, you have an easier approach then to um, creating the, uh, the areas of light to counter the areas of shadow. So you're building up a sculptural form. So you can see by, uh, you know, putting in highlights here and there, it's creating a dramatic, they're dramatic elements. They're like, you know, a concept where you've got um, percussion. So the white pencil is like the symbols, you know, they're, they're percussion instruments in the, in the orchestra to create that sort of sharp bang, you know, clear, um, sharp, clear notes. That's what you want the white for. White pencil will help you establish that sharp clarity. Remember that there's a shadow falling over the, over the schnoz, over the nose. So think about uh, that when you're drawing. Um, I've actually obliterated one of the lines that I wanted to keep in. So there we go, put that back. That will do there. Uh, put a bit of side light into the chin there and reflect it over the knob of the chin. Uh, what else can I do? Lighten the shadow area just a touch here and there. The bulge of the, the lip muscle underneath. The continuation of the chin over onto that side and around the mouth like so. Get the reflection coming back in, the bounce light, yeah? What else am I missing? Oh, I'm missing a few bits. Sharpen it again, we might lose this pencil. Um, it's all right, I've got another, I have another couple hundred in box. This is where I, I, uh, I hoard. <laughs> I don't hoard toilet paper, I do hoard art materials because uh, there's nothing worse than running out of something that you need, you know, and then stopping. It's, it's like, oh, I've run out of this, I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it without this. So you have to use something that's less um, useful. So again, there's a lot of, you know, lines here that are crisscrossing. And I just want to get some of them in there. I haven't got a hope in hell of getting everything, but some of them. It's a lot, a lot to do, but I'm really enjoying this. It's such a great face. Beautiful and expressive eyes. You know, it makes uh, makes the task of doing the a caricature more fun when you've got such a good subject to play with. You know, it's like um, it's a gift. It's a gift for the for the exercise. It's it's the funnest, Ram. So. Good stuff, man, good stuff. Look at this. Here we go, We're getting down to the muscles that pull the mouth from around the nose, you know. And then of course you've got the chin, the cheekbones, hitting that angle of the cheekbones, which are always present there, just underneath the skull, just underneath the skin. They represent where the, the skin pulls away from the, the, the skull itself to create a sharp accent.
Very nice. Let's try to get some brush in there. Uh, what am I going to use? I'm going to use the... I've got enough in here. This is a, a Zig brush pen. The, um, the ink out of the Zig is quite... Um, dries very flat, which is what, what we want uh, in this. So I'm just going to help out the uh, contrasts a little bit by just helping out the black. Here and there, there and here. Just a little bit. You gotta remember most of these jokes that were in the Three Stooges in the 1930s. When I watched them, it was in the 19, end of the 1960s and early 70s. So, in you know, black and white TV. But um, it's like 30, 40 years later, and they're still funny, you know. Um, Mind you, a lot of, um, for some reason, women don't like it. I think it's because it's like physical. You know, it's like schadenfreude. You're laughing at other people's misfortune. Um, love that word, schadenfreude. Say it again. Schadenfreude. Mmm. It's like the, the little kid from uh, South Park, you know, Nelson. Ha ha. <laughs> That's what it is, schadenfreude. Laughing at other people's misfortune. And because they're very physical, they're very funny, you know. And, um, I mean, we, I find things funny. and People get hurt, you know, face plant or something on a skateboard or something on the internet. I find it very funny. Um, I'd probably find it funnier in real life because, I don't know, I just sort of built that way, I guess. Um, I'm trying to the uh, light that's coming in from this uh, um, is quite reflective. The more paper, sorry, the more pencil you put on, the, the, the paper gets quite glossy. So the concept of these thick and thin lines, maybe you want me to explain that a little bit, no? Um, what it is, is to create a roundness and a definitive, sometimes you use it to describe a definitive edge of something. And uh, other times you use it to describe importance of something, to have it stand out from the background, say, which this also does. Um, it also can describe round shapes, round form. I'll explain uh, Explain very briefly. Here we go. So, say you want to draw a sphere. So, there's a thick and thin sphere, right? It's a circle, but because of the thickness of the line around the bottom, I've turned it into a sphere. How do you know that? Because it's inferring that there's a light source that comes over there, casting a, th a thicker shadow that gives a thicker line on the other side, the corresponding side. So that's how we respond to it. So it could it indicate, it's used as a, as a graphic um, element, uh, or graphic, um, yeah, element will do, um, that has different properties and different reasons. So it, it could be, you know, separate to have something stand out more from the background or from other elements. Uh, to make them feel more um, important, perhaps. I'm 
not very neat with this, am I? Doesn't matter. <laughs> I'll fix it up. We're going to use another pen. I'll just use one of these, I think. Um, it's a little bit, uh, the brush here is a little bit shorter, so we can get a little bit of speed building up as we write this. There we go. Just a little bit. Um, reflections, you know the side reflections of the, the light that I wanted to put in. I think um, I can try to build them up a little bit, not a, not too much. I don't want to overdo it, but just a little bit of help would be handy. Okay. All right. So. Uh, let's try and fill out the background, sort of cut in here so that I can get, um, I, I love, I'm not putting black here, I'm putting white because I don't want the black lines to be overshadowed because around the face and everything is so important to this expression winning the day, a beautiful expression and um, I'm just so honoured to have that chance to work in it, work with it. You know, it's like, it's a star, baby. Um, so yeah, this is like fun. Fun and games, it's all fun and games until someone gets their eye put out. Um, I'm filling in the background because with this sort of shape that he's kind of poking his head in the window, Right, so that's what the frame effect gives you. It gives you a definitive shape. And because of our ability to understand balance in composition, um, it's a beautiful device to establish a, um, a feeling of positive and negative space. So Larry is a positive space and everything in the background within the confines of the window, i.e. the back, you know, the outside world or whatever behind you. There, that is all negative space. So the combination and the, the use of negative space as a graphic design element, and I'm using that term on purpose, because concepts of composition come from fine art. So uh, comp there was once there was a, there was once there was only just composition. Then when they invented the camera, and of course the the uh, impressionists were the early adopters of cameras because they they loved to experiment with light and and. Uh, um, you know, photographing movement. Like Degas with the ballerinas and the horses, of course he loved horses. Um, so to make studies of that, no one could really do galloping horses effectively before that, until they had the ability to study you know, the uh, one four hundredth of a second as horses move too fast. Anyway, um, 
I digress. I always digress. I'm just trying to uh, establish some hierarchy here. So the composition is um, uh, one of the things that come to us from fine art and have been pointed out many, many times is the theory of, of or the idea of open composition versus closed composition. So closed composition is everything is in the picture plane. So try to think of, uh, you know, uh, scenes of um, angels and things like that on icons. You can see the angel's wings are even squished into the picture plane. So everything is in the picture plane. It's locked. There's no. It's, it's not really a window as such. It's more of a everything. Everything that's important. Everything is important to the narrative is in the picture. So that's the theory behind it. And of course, photography gave us the co concept of cropping and you know even slicing heads off and half of heads. If you look at some of Degas, get Degas work. So we never had that ability. No one thought to cut things off so much. Well, we did with portraits, but you know, just busts, but uh, you know, not half a face. And this sort of Dutch tilt sort of concept never existed before. That actually came from film. So our concept of composition has been enriched by these different mediums. So it's a very exciting period of uh, art that we live in. And uh, yeah, so I think that might be a dear from me. This is, um, this is a very fine picture. <laughs> this is a very fine picture indeed. And I really, really enjoyed this. I enjoyed this so much. Here is our beautiful Larry. Here's our Larry before. And here is our Larry afterwards. And, you know, does it look like him? A little bit, a little bit. But you know what? At the end of the day, I love this. It's so much fun. It's so much fun. And uh, I, I really appreciate him. And uh, I appreciate you guys for, uh, for uh, you know, sitting on, on this uh, journey with me as I uh, discovered Larry Fine's uh, wonderful uh, physical... Um, poetry of, of uh, his face. So this is Larry Fine, this is Franz Cantor, and I will catch you on the flip side. Bye-bye.